Last night was a pretty eventful one for Battlefield 5 and for DICE. A live stream happened where we learned some new details about Update 5.2, and then just a couple of hours later, DICE accidentally leaked two new maps that could be coming to the game in 2020. So, lots for us to talk about in this video today then. But it is Black Friday today, and it wouldn't be Black Friday without some kind of discount, so I thought I'd let you know that you can get 20% off any of my merch over at the merch store. The Born to Shill hoodie, the field stripping designs, they're live, and all of them are 20% off if you use the link at the top of the description. The discount is applied automatically if you click that link, but if you go through any of the other links, then you can use the code CYBER20 when you check out, and you'll get 20% off. You can get t-shirts and hoodies in all the different designs, so just go for it. Okay then, let's start off with those two new leaked maps. Last night, a back-end change within Battlefield 5 allowed for a very short period of time for players to see two new map names within the server browser. Those names were Solomon Islands and Almarge Encampment. Now, if you try and go and look for these names at this point in time, they are no longer there. They've been removed again, but it confirms that this was indeed a mistake and DICE has now cleaned things up. But of course, we're the internet and the internet finds things out, they don't ever forget those things. Now the Solomon Islands, this appears to be the rumored fourth Pacific map coming to Battlefield 5. And the existence of this map had already been picked up on by data miners in the past. References to a jungle map were found over a month ago. And it now looks like we've kind of got confirmation that the Solomon Islands is that jungle map. Rumours were flying about with people speculating that this jungle setting would be the Solomon Islands. And unfortunately, this leak has pretty much confirmed that. Where in the Solomon Islands is still anyone's guess at this point. You won't see DICE addressing this leak or mistake, so we're still sort of left wondering exactly what kind of map we are going to see, but if the jungle description is anything to go by, it's likely going to be an infantry focus map, maybe a little bit smaller, it'll be focused around the dense trees and maybe some shoreline action as well. Perhaps it's going to depict some of the action around Guadalcanal, who knows. And then there's the second map, Almage Encampment. Now, back a very long time ago, before the summer, when things weren't going so well for Battlefield 5, you might remember that data miners uncovered references to five possible competitive maps coming to multiplayer. Now, two of those maps, Lofoten Islands and Provence, have now been released, but they're repurposed maps. They've been made to work on the smaller game modes. 5v5 was cancelled at the end of the summer and a lot of the content that was going to be included in that module is now being converted across to the main multiplayer section of the game. So with two 5v5 maps already having been released, that leaves three more possible maps not released and Almarge Encampment might just be one of those remaining three. Almarge is a town in Libya and obviously that really changes up the fighting location compared to where we are at the moment with Battlefield 5. We're, we're fighting in the Pacific at the moment. And it's hard to say with any kind of certainty what DICE is really planning here, but if I was going to have a stab in the dark, then I'd guess that they're lining up this smaller map like Provence and Lofoten to release after Chapter 5, maybe in Chapter 6. This might well be another repurposed 5v5 map made to work with the smaller game modes and it will be added to the rotation for Squad Conquest and Team Deathmatch. That adds another piece of content to the game that players might be looking for. It's not the all-out war map style that I think lots of players are looking for, but it is another multiplayer map nonetheless and adding it to the rotations for those smaller game modes, that's not going to hurt anybody. Now, of course, at the moment, this is a leak of information that we shouldn't really have gotten. But the difference is that this time, DICE themselves were the ones to leak it, rather than the information being found by a data miner. The information was accidentally shown in the main menu of Battlefield 5. That adds more weight to its legitimacy. However, I will still say that it is worth adding another pinch to the mountain of salt that you've already consumed by watching these leak data mine videos, because clearly this information wasn't supposed to go out and things could still change between now and when we see it again. If we see it again. Well, we might not, you never know. 
Right, okay, that's the two new maps out of the way, and now we can move on to the stream from last night, because that had some pretty interesting information in it as well. The stream was hosted by community manager Adam Freeman, and it featured developers David Serland, Ryan MacArthur, and Florian Lebihan, better known as Drunksy, and they were talking about a bunch of things, so I picked out the most important stuff that I think we should all care about. First of all, a really big one. David Serland mentioned that the weapon balance changes coming in update 5.2, you know the ones that we've had two blog posts about already and are still leaving people very, very confused, they might be tweaked even further from what we found out earlier this week, which of course was an extension to the previous blog post. Here's a clip of what he said in the live stream. What have we changed with this build, David? We looked at a lot of the feedback we got in from our early post of, of uh, what we're changing with 5.2 when it comes to weapon damage and ranges, uh, and especially the time to kill part. Mm. And I'm using that word because you're using it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've, we'll, this build essentially removes a lot of any additional type of that. We still keep the range parts. Yeah. Uh, and we're trying to make a combination. And it, we played it this morning. I haven't played it a lot. I can say. It, you know, we know for sure, sure. this is perfect and, and whatnot, but it feels uh, a bunch better. Uh, and I hope you can see in the gameplay when you see him using weapons, especially, you know, the Thompson and, and things like that, uh, what it really feels like. That's why we're playing TDM as well. Yeah. Uh, if we take that as a sign of what's to come, then it may well be that the reaction to the weapon balance changes has yet again been so strong from the community that DICE is kind of willing to roll back some of their moves here in order to find a bit of a middle ground. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, only time can tell because none of us out here publicly have had a chance to play with the new settings yet in any of their forms. Whether that's the first set or the second set or this update or whatever it happens to be. The only way to know if these are good or bad changes is to have actually played with the changes. And none of us have yet, so we still can't say whether this is good or not. Secondly, I do have some separate weapon information from the weapon balance. We're talking about brand new weapons being added to Battlefield 5 here. The lunge mine gadget, that's still set to be delayed into 2020. There was a little bit of confusion earlier this week where people spotted it as the Tides of War reward for next week's Tides of War, but it had already been confirmed that that wasn't going to happen, but the UI hadn't been updated. It's likely going to be delayed until update 5.4 because the collision system isn't working correctly and a few of the lunge attempts you sort of get unexploded mines on the end of the stick which is really not what you want. Then the Type 2A SMG, one of the new weapons coming with the Pacific Chapter, that's going to release as a Tides of War unlock in a few weeks time. It's got a 1000 round per minute rate of fire which is kind of insane and it's completely at odds with the grease gun which is another new weapon being added soon that sits right at the other end of the scale it fires much much slower but to compensate for that it outputs a much higher damage per shot at the time of making this video according to drunksy on the live stream the grease gun can three shot kill players out to 10 meters which makes it one of the highest damage output automatic weapons at close range so two new interesting SMGs making their way into the game very very soon and then there's the BAR which is likely going to be the first of the new weapons to launch into Battlefield 5 maybe around the same time as the launch of Wake Island that will have two separate fire rate options the same as the model in Battlefield 1 did when DICE added that back in 2018 so another interesting weapon that that we can look forward to. Then David Serland, he emphasized the importance of a new internal project at DICE called Operation Sandbox. Now, I've spoken about this before, but to briefly explain it to anybody who wasn't listening, DICE is trying to bring back some of that all-out war, that sandbox feeling to Battlefield 5. The release of the Pacific gave the game content that really embraced the sandbox feeling, where lots of different things could be happening at the same time, lots of explosions, chaos, everything happening at once. So this internal movement at DICE is going to keep pushing elements of that feeling back into the content that has already released. So we're looking at year one content here. The flow, the atmosphere, the tempo, all of that is being looked at and DICE will be making more and more changes around Operation Sandbox as we move into 2020 to turn Battlefield 5 into the Battlefield game that it really should be. And then lastly, a change that I'd actually completely forgotten about because I'd already experienced this, 
the kill sounds from Battlefield 1, they're being brought back into Battlefield 5. These were active at the Pacific event that I captured gameplay from about a month ago and then brought it back and posted it on YouTube. I also got to play the Wake Island map and that was playing on a different build and it had the Battlefield 1 kill sounds. You might not remember them, they're the little jingles that you get every time you scored a kill or a headshot kill. They're returning to Battlefield 5. And David Serland mentioned that they're an element of the sandbox feeling that DICE wanted to reinstate to sort of keep you in the zone when you're scoring a kill. It keeps that tempo moving. It's an element that I really liked in Battlefield 1, so hearing those again, that will be cool. Okay, that just about wraps things up. New maps coming, new TTK weapon balance changes again, again. It's a really weird situation. I still don't really know what DICE is going to be doing here. And we got some more information about upcoming weapons and features to update 5.2. Leave me your thoughts down below in the comments section. And don't forget to drop by the merch store today and snag 20% off any of the designs. Use that link at the top of the description and the discount is auto applied at the checkout. Or if it's not working, you can use code CYBER20. Thanks very much for watching today. And until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.